Hello and welcome to this video on roots. Now in the previous video we looked at how we could calculate simple powers. So we saw that 3 to the power of 2, which we could also say as 3 squared, meant 3 times 3. So remember that the little 2 told us how many 3's that we multiply together and that would be equal to 9. Now we can actually do the opposite of that. If we have the square root of 9, what that means is what number squared would give you 9, which means what number times itself gives 9. And we know that number is 3 because 3 multiplied by itself gives you 9. So 3 squared is equal to 9 and the square root of 9 is equal to 3. So we say this symbol here as the square root of and that line above has to go all the way over the number that you're square rooting. Let's do some more. If I had the square root of 16, that says what number squared, what number multiplied by itself gives you 16? Well, it's four, because four multiplied by itself, four times four would give you 16. What about the square root of 25? What number multiplied by itself gives you 25? Well, it's 5, because 5 squared is equal to 25. And sometimes we don't get a nice whole number. So if I had, say, the square root of 41, you could do that on your count case. So if you press the square root button and then type in 41 and press equals, it will actually say the square root of 41 because it's trying to give you an exact answer. Because the square root of 41 could be the answer to a question. But if I press the SD key, that converts it to a decimal. So we see it's going to be 6.4031, etc., etc. And that means if you do 6.4031 times by itself, that's going to give you 41. And that sort of makes sense because we know that 6 squared gives you 36, which is lower than 41, but we round up, 7 squared would give you 49, which is more than this. So we know the square root of 41 must lie somewhere between 6 and 7, even if we didn't have a calculator. Similarly, if we had the square root of 28, well, it'd be hard to do without a calculator, but we know that 5 squared gives you 25, which is smaller than 28, whereas 6 squared gives you 36, which is bigger than that. So we know the square root of 28 must lie somewhere between 5 and 6. And let's do it on the calculator. Square root of 28, SD key, is in fact 5.2915, etc., etc. So it was between 5 and 6. Now this is known as the square root, but we can also have other roots. We saw in the previous video that if we had 2 to the power of 3, we could also say that as 2 cubed, that was 8. And we might wonder if there's an opposite of cubing. And there is. It's called cube rooting. So we have the same symbol as before, but we put a little cheeky 3 there. So we say that as the cube root of 8. And what it means is what number cubed would give you 8. So what times itself times itself would give you 8? Well, that number's 2, because we know that 2 cubed is 8. So the cube root of 8 is 2. Let's try it with some other numbers. What about the cube root of 64? With a little 3 there, don't forget the little 3. Well, what number cubed gives you 64? What number times by itself times by itself gives you 64? Well, that number is 4. But notice, by the way, that the square root of 64, what number squared gives you 64? Well, it's 8. So the cube root of 64 is 4 because 4 cubed is 64, but the square root of 64 is 8 because 8 squared is 64. Now you might wonder, um, why don't we put the 2 there? And it's just because it's very common when you have a root that it's the square root. And because of that, if we don't put any number there at all, it by default means the square root. You can have other roots as well. So I could have, for example, the fourth root of 16. And what that means is what number to the power of 4, so what number times itself times itself times itself, gives you 16? Well, it's 2, because 2 to the power of 4 is equal to 16. Well, we wanted the fourth root of 81. So we ask, what number to the power of 4 is equal to 81? Well, it's 3. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, i.e. 3 to the power of 4, is 81. So the fourth root of 81 is 3. 
we could have a 5 there, which we'd say is the fifth root. So we have special names if the number is either 2 or 3. So we call that the square root. Well, we don't put the number. We call that the cube root, but we don't have any special names from 4 onwards. So we just call it the fourth root, the fifth root, etc.